mihiana ki a tātou. Kore te raru o ngā mihini o te ao hau. Ka pakaru ngā mihini ko ngaro te tangata. Uh, family, what I was just saying was, that's the trouble with, often the trouble with new technology. When it breaks, you're stuffed. But uh, it's the same thing with navigation. Everyone sits back and relies on their GPS. And when it doesn't work, they're going, what do I do now? So I'm here to talk to you about the revival of Waka culture in Aotearoa and in the Pacific. For start off, a waka is one of these things. That's my waka, going over those big waves. There was a 27-day voyage from Aotearoa to a small island called Whakarawa. Now, if you look in a dictionary and you look up the word waka, it'll tell you it's a canoe. And then once you start hearing translations of the stories of my ancestors, it comes out like this. The Maoris paddled their canoe to New Zealand a thousand years ago. And you'll even hear some stories that say the Maoris got to New Zealand because they went on their canoe out for a fishing trip and a storm came and they got blown away. And they're fortunate to have landed on New Zealand soil. No one goes fishing with uh, 20 people, um, a pig, some chickens, and everything else. So what's happened over the years is that the, the value of the stories that moved our people across the face of this globe was zero. The fact that we had great uh, minds that could see past the distant horizon was never ever talked about. It's been very interesting over the last few days because we hear the name of this ancestor of ours, Maui, popping up in different talks. I talked about him the other day when we met the Sheik. Uh, Vince yesterday talked about him because that's the name of their company. Maui was this great ancestor who's known throughout Polynesia and, from, and known on other islands through Micronesia and Melanesia as well. What's he known for? If you listen to the stories, he's known for going out on his canoe with a fish hook and fishing up land. And this is a little bit of a story up here about fishing up land. This is a trip we did a few years ago where we sailed from Aotearoa to Hawaii and we fished Hawaii up out of the ocean. That's what a story of, about Maui is all about. When we talk about him fishing up land, we're talking about the great feats of discovery that this, this ancestor of, our, of ours did. Fishing up land is our way of saying this is a voyage of discovery. Slowing down the sun, which Vincent talked about yesterday, is a story of sailing to a new place where in the summer the days are a lot longer and the nights are shorter. Those kinds of stories are the things that people don't understand when they read our stories or listen to them. And the art of decoding those, the information in those stories is slowly losing its way. In order to encourage young people to do this kind of thing, we have to go down this pathway of decoding all these stories of our ancestors and say to them, look, actually, this is what it's all about even decoding the mysteries around things like maths, uh, environmental knowledge, uh, engineering, nautical um, design, 
maritime thinking, all of these kinds of things. We have to decode all these things to the point where our young people say, that's what our ancestors did. Now, I remember one time when we were out, I was, you know, when I'm sailing on a waka like this, there's a way you can tell how fast you're going without using a machine, right? So one time we were out on the waka cruising along and we had some young people, these, we had school kids sailing with us. And um, I said to them, I bet you I can tell you how fast our waka's going. And they said, go on then. And I said, here, you take the, mach- you take the GPS, take it over there, and I'll tell you how fast we're going in a minute. So I looked over the side, watched the water going past, and they're playing on their equipment over on this side of the, on the other side of the wicker. And I looked up at them and I said, "We're going about six and a half knots." And they said, "Actually, we're going six point seven." And I said, "Oh, your machine's broken." But really what it did was, it, that came about because we were having this conversation and these kids said, because I'm going to them, how are you doing at school? They said, ah, we hate maths. We hate science. We hate doing all of this. We hate reading. And I said, look, guess what I just did? It's maths. And I said, why don't you like doing that stuff? Oh, because our two pointer, our ancestors never did any of that kind of stuff. I said, well, what do you think they did? Well, they didn't do these things. I said, how do you think you built a canoe or a big sailing vessel like this? How do you think we get from places to places? And then suddenly the light turns on. That these kind of things, maths, science, design, engineering, all these things are things that our ancestors used to do. Only everyone forgets to tell us that. Or everyone tells us that what our ancestors did was uh, nothing in comparison to the Western way of looking at things. And so this voyage that I'm showing you up here on this uh, screen, as I said, was a run we did from Aotearoa to Hawaii, which took, which which covered a distance of 7,300 kilometers. And uh, what we did was we used this trip as a, graduating experience for some of the new navigators that have been doing stuff with us. And their real test was to navigate the canoe from Nukuheva, which we've just seen, to Hawaii. And, you know, really, when, you have, when you're saying that this is going to be a test, right, that this person is going to be on the waka, and their job is to sail 2,000 miles across the ocean and get you to this little speck of land in the middle of nowhere, there's only two outcomes, pass or fail. Okay, so I'm here, so he passed. He did really good. And um, the thing is, though, is that the main drive of these kinds of things is conversations with our ancestors. And, and someone said to me one time, what are you talking about? You know, I said, well, when I get to a point where I think I'm needing some extra information, I have a conversation with my ancestors. And they, everyone on my crew has got it now because I'll walk up to the front of the waka and I'll just sit there while we're sailing and I'll be there for you know, maybe half an hour, an hour, maybe longer. And then I'll come back and I'll go, we're doing this now. And they go, who were you talking to? I said, well, actually I wasn't talking to anybody. You know? All I was doing was sitting down and through the files of all the talks that I've had in my lifetime, and all the files of all the things that um, my teachers have told me around waka, talk from Mo, who is our number one teacher, talks from Hector, uh, that Hinamort uh, mentioned him yesterday, talks from Clay Bertelman and other of my friends that are no longer with us, and remembering the stories that my grandparents told me. And I can walk away from that conversation and say, this is what we've got to do next. And so what happens? You do something like this. You sail for weeks and weeks, and then suddenly the island that you're looking for is fished up out of the ocean. 
It's fished up because you had faith in the kinds of things that you've been told. You haven't listened to anybody else who's said, oh, you can't do that. And you know, I, have to, I have to share this. I've got a little bit of time left. But when in the first years, when we first started to revive these voyages, every time we'd get our waka ready to go, all our families would come down to the beach and they'd all be crying because they'd all been conditioned to think that these were one-way death trips. You know, because everyone thought, oh, these guys don't know what they're doing. These guys aren't going to be able to do that. And honestly, you'd stand, and, and our wives and everybody are standing there, and the tears are streaming down their eyes, down their faces. But, you know, part of our job was to make this become an everyday occurrence. So when we leave somewhere, people are going, oh, they're off on another one of their journeys. And we're lucky. We've sailed everywhere. Uh, my waka and Ngahiwi's waka, they've sailed to San Francisco, to Australia, all around the islands of the Pacific. He was trying to convince me to sail one here. But COVID got in the way. But at the end of the day, it's about how do we bring this into context for our young people? How do we show them what the opportunities are? What can they do with the opportunity we place in front of them? But the other thing that we have to think about as I come to the end is the fact that we learned all this stuff from our ancestors who were great. And for us, it's our responsibility, you know, that the things that they gave us, knowledge, new homes, new land to go to, are not wasted. We have to be like they were because we are responsible to have for the ancestors, not just from the past, ancestors of now, but the ancestors of the future. Kia kaha tātou, mihana kia tātou, tēnā koutou, kia ora tātou.